Coach, I'm going to just open up if you're good with that. Yeah, no, just, you know, first day in the books, and um, it was good. We'll go right to questions, but I just wanted to say, um, you know, we don't take for granted the fact that it's first day of spring practice. We have so many people here, and the way you guys cover us, it means a lot to us. So, appreciate you guys. Ryan, we saw Marv out there taking some reps at punt returner. Just kind of what's the thought process there? Yeah, well, with Emeka not going this this spring, we're just going to put a bunch of guys back. It's hard when we're inside. So um, looking at the weather, I'm, I'm hoping to get outside some, and, and that'll give us a better feel for it. But uh, always looking to build depth there uh, at every turner. And um, you know, he's been doing it now kind of in practice a little bit here and there. And uh, he's got you know really good depth perception. And, and uh, so if we need him back there, we'll use him. Um, and, and so. Not having a few guys at spring practice allows us the opportunity to, um, you know, try new guys to build depth down the road, and that's always healthy. But um, you know, I, I thought just seeing him back there today did a nice job. Is this a time where you look at a guy like Marv and think, what else can we do to yeah. find even more ways to get him the ball? Yeah, absolutely. We're moving him around today. Uh, did a bunch of things with him. Um, you know, we want him to grow as well, and everybody kind of comes into spring with a different plan of what they want to get done. You know, we don't want to just be the same old stuff for Marv. So um, we're going to try to build his tools and his package. Uh, uh, front row, Dave Biddle. 24-7 sports. Hi, Ryan. Um, when you look at your depth at various positions, like um, on both ends of the spectrum, like what, like what are you happy with as far as the depth at certain positions? And what, what are you kind of concerned about at certain positions? Um, I think when you look at our depth, uh, let's, I guess we'll start on offense, uh, running back, receiver. Um, I think that's you know pretty strong there. A tight end, you know, we're building that depth. Um, I feel pretty good about that. Um, this is the first time we've had three quarterbacks, and we'll have a fourth one coming in the summer. You know, I, I can't remember. It, it's been a while since we've had that many quarterbacks in. Um, you know, on scholarship, so that that's that's good. Offensive line is certainly some guys we've got to replace and, and build that. So that's an area where we got to focus on um, on defense. Um, up front, uh, I, I feel good about the first group and in, in, in a half, you know, and I think we got to keep building the twos and threes. Uh, but we have some good young players there. Um, linebacker, again, same thing. Um, I feel good about the you know first three or four guys, and then we got to keep building the depth there. Um, you know, safety is something we, we brought, um, you know, Jihad in, and we brought Davidson in at corner, so that, that helped with the depth. But um, I think we'll get a better feel for where everybody's at going into this year, probably in the next. Probably by the time we get back from spring break and I get to put that first weekend, the first scrimmage on Saturday, we'll have a better idea there. Um, but we're always trying to build depth because we know we're going to need it. You know, we talk about this type of thing uh, this time of year, and then we get in the preseason of, you know, how are you going to get all these guys playing time? Yet eventually they all get into the game. You know, so um, some areas, as you know, they have experience, game experience. Others, we're trying to get that in practice. Quick, is he a guy that you look at? It's like we have to get a role for him. He needs to be a starter, right? or is he not there yet? I mean, you've seen what he can do in his first year. So, yeah, I mean that he's. You know, we're always trying to find the first eleven guys, and then we kind of build it from there. And um, you know, he, he's he's in the role that he played last year, um, stepping in after reclassifying and coming here in the summer. Uh, I couldn't have been more impressed with what he did. I think he's got a really really bright future ahead of him. I think he can do a lot of things for us. So um, as we start to you know get into the spring, we're going to dive into some of the things that he can do for us. But he is a playmaker, and he's going to play a lot of football. Hey, hey folks, let's, let's try to do one and done, unless your follow-up pertains to your initial question. I just want to be able to get as many questions as possible. Clay Hall, WSYX. The, uh, the Ole Miss transfer you mentioned, Davison, yeah. uh, cornerback, do you expect him to start or have any idea about that? I mean, I think he <laughs> wants to He wants to compete. So um, he's going to, and he'll have a great opportunity. And First day in the books today, so it's good. You know, when you go through eight weeks of a off-season program, it uh, it allows guys to build discipline and camaraderie and strength and a lot of things. But now it's time to go on the field, and without a great eight weeks of uh, off-season, you know, it's hard to have a good spring. But so many guys did. He, you know, he he came in, stepped in, and, and did a nice job um, establishing himself. You know, early on, and that's that's something that you know coming in from another program is not always easy to do. So he's done a good job of that. Um, but it's going to be it's going to be a good competition. I, I've been impressed with the off season that some of these guys have had. I thought, you know, Denzel's um, really you know had a really good eight weeks and uh, had a really good first day today. So I think that's been great seeing Jordan out there. Davidson will be out there. I mean, we we got some good um, 
you know, good guys back there. And I think they, they're all growing up. And so, as we know, I mean, that was an area that we got to make sure that we really take a big step in. And um, and so it was a good first day today. We'll we'll take a look at the film. Right behind him, Adam King, WBNS 10 TV. CJ Stroud said at the combine he wished he had used his athleticism a little more in college, run a little more. And I guess that kind of leads me to wonder, what is the ideal quarterback, you know, when it, when it comes to the vision of running versus passing? And then where does the quarterback race stand right now? Yeah, just day one in the books. Um, but I, I think when you're looking at the, you know, ideal thing, there isn't really an ideal. I think anytime a defense has to account for the quarterback, then um, you've got what you want done, you know, in the run game, certainly. In the pass game, um, you know, when you can create, extend, those type of things, um, it really, you know, it's really the the X factor, I think, uh, on offense is when the quarterback can do that. So, um, you know, you, you got to get a feel for what that is. You know, how long do you stay in the pocket? When do you escape? Um, you know, when do you launch yourself for that first down? When do you protect yourself? Because it's a long season. There's a lot of factors and variables that come into it. And each quarterback's a little bit different. So, um, you know, you think about, you know, since I've been here, you had JT. You know, that was a certainly had Dwayne. Um, you know, he kind of found his way, you know, in that Maryland game. Uh, then you had Justin. You know, I think it was the first game he had a, you know, he pulled one for a long touchdown run and then kind of went on from there. And um, and then CJ, and, and now now we'll have a new chapter here. So each each quarterback has a different style. Um, but ultimately, that's what you're trying to get done. You're trying to equate numbers in a run game and then have the ability to extend when, when applicable in the pass game. How do you kind of set that up going into spring? Uh, yeah, those guys are going to compete and um, you know get a bunch of reps. I mean, that's what's great. And you know we're running three groups right now, so there's a lot of reps to go around. And um, you know just the first couple of days here, and then we'll go on break, and then we'll come back and really dig in. Uh, far right field, Justin Holdoff, WCMH. What's your relationship like with Coach Knowles here, one year two, having that full spring season, and now what are you looking for specifically that maybe you didn't think about last spring? Uh, great relationship. He, um, you know, for me now seeing a full year of uh, the defense, you know, how it uh, is installed, what it looks like, uh, how it adapts over the year and the season, um, and then how it has the ability to adapt based on your personnel. So um, more familiar with it and, you know, able to give more feedback. Uh, front row right, Austin Ward, rivals, dot in the eyes. Uh, Ryan, I don't. I don't know what you have it officially, but it seems like maybe the scholarship numbers on defense right now, the guys you have available at maybe 29 or 30, is that enough for you to do everything you want in spring, or is that something that changes plans? I'm just thinking, like, go and do inside drill. You don't want to, you don't want that number to get any smaller, I wouldn't think. Yeah, um, you know, it's going to be good in preseason to get some of those guys um, who are coming in the summer here. Uh, but um, you know, when you look at um, you know, our numbers right now, we were able to run threes. You know, um, if we get some guys nicked up, we'll have to adjust. And that's something that's that's happened in the past. Um, but right now, our numbers are pretty good. So looking to have a healthy spring and hopefully continue to play with three groups. The same thing on offense with what, you know, you have Dallin and <coughs> Chip to go, but, you know, Evan's still working back, Trey's still working back. Like, a lot of reps for them, that's a benefit. But does it allow you to get done – with the rushing attack, what you want? Yeah, I think so. And I think so much of it starts up front, and then preseason will be big. Um, you know, we kind of look at the two spring and the preseason as an extension of, of, of you know, or, or together. So practice one of the preseason is really like practice 16 of spring practice. So um, while we're not going to have some of those guys, you know, there's still a lot of work to be done. And again, it allows us opportunity to get build some depth, um, and then. And then you know, look to get some guys back and get them, you know, in game shape as we head into preseason. Right next door, Tim May, Letterman Row. Uh, Ryan, it, it appeared, and of course we don't get to watch whole practices very much, but it appeared you were roaming a little bit more. <laughs> uh, are you moving more into that head coach kind of like uh, see the whole field, so to speak? Uh, practicing. What, what I started like the first you... the first half of practice I was, and then yeah. before you know it, I was down there. <laughs> I was yeah. right back to where I was uh, most of the year last year, but yeah, I'm I'm trying to, to do more of that um, the best I can, and 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 you know see it all. Um, we actually we have some technology where we're able to watch practice on a lap or on a, a little bit of a uh, iPad and then kind of watch it. And I was able to do a little bit of that and kind of bounce around a little bit. So the more I can do that, I think the better right now in spring. Yeah, did you feel good? About it? Did you like it though? I mean, uh, doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, you you have a, a bigger. 
um, lens on everything and you're able to see, you know, um, from, from a, from a, a big, big picture view. Um, but you know, it doesn't take long before I'm running over there and coaching up the quarterbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right next door, Joey Kaufman. From the dispatch. Ryan, we saw Mitchell Melton, uh, out there doing some, some drills with the defensive lineman. He's somebody you obviously didn't get to play last year. Just yeah. we're seeing his recovery and, and how's he coming along and, yeah, he's been cleared for individual drills, but we're going to kind of hold him to that for, um, I think, the majority of the spring, if not all the spring. We'll kind of see how that goes. But um, you know, we're hoping he can make an impact for us this year. He had a really, um, you know, as, as before the injury, we were excited about him, what he was doing. So he's got really good pass rush ability and um, really good strength and play speed. So um, we just got to be smart and make sure we're bringing him back the right way. Obviously, in the window that we saw today, a lot of just sort of basic quarterback stuff as you're kind of getting things started. Yeah. I was curious, uh, is there a break today between things like that and when you get more competitive with it into more decision-making things? And how, how do you fold that into the spring? Because I assume that's going to be a huge part of the evaluation. Yeah, huge. The first few days without pads on is, is really just building the foundation. And any time we've gone away from that, we feel like it's been counterproductive. You still kind of have to build and paint the bridge the right way. So that's what today was all about. You know, day one install really hasn't changed for seven years here. We'll continue to do that, build it as we go. Um, but quickly, as, as we get back after break, there'll be a lot of competitive situations and win or loser days. Would you say that when you come back on break, that first Saturday is the first scrimmage? Yeah. Yep, that's the plan. Was that the 25th, I think, right? That'd be a scrimmage. Is that the 25th? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. 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 That's the plan. Ryan, the, the offensive tackle situation for like Josh Pryor maybe starting out at on the left side. As you were roaming around, how much were you watching the tackles and what do you see from them this spring? How do you how comfortable do you feel with what you've got there? Well, Josh, we did we moved Josh to left. We felt like he had enough experience. Um, he felt comfortable making that move. We'll see how that goes as we start to put the pads on it. It's it's hard with no pads, you know, just point of contact. But but watching him move his feet, that was really good. Um, you know, we see Zan and Integra, you know, at the other side, and so um, you know, watch the film, kind of see where they're at. Carson's at center there. Vic's at center. Um, so first day, you know, it, it's kind of hard to tell, but um, I, I don't think anybody looked out of place. Um, and, uh, and they're going against a good front, you know, JT and Jack and Tyleek and, and Ty. Um, so, um, I, you know, we're going we're gonna to get a great evaluation as we head, you know, through 15 practices. Uh, four to the right, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Rowe. Brian, it looked like Dallin's bulked up a little bit, but a little bit away. I think the roster has like eight pounds heavier. I don't know if that's accurate, but uh, what, do you, what did you see from him this winter that makes you think that he's ready to take the next step, especially with Trey and Henry being out this winter? Anytime you come in that first year and you get thrown to the fire like he did, um, there's just there's a lot going on for you. Uh, I thought he handled himself really well, and when we needed him, you know, he, he stepped in and played. Anytime you're into year two, like you said, physically, you know, you get stronger. Um, emotionally, you understand it better. Mentally, you understand the the uh, the scheme better. So it just starts to slow down, and you're able to play faster. And so uh, into year two with with game experience under his belt. So. Um, you know, hopefully all those things add up to, to more playing time, more production. Apprehension is the right word, but it seemed like there was some hesitancy to play him a little bit down the stretch there in the season. But what do you need to see from him this spring that kind of clears those concerns and makes you think, okay, he could be a guy that we need to rely on? Uh, just, just keep building. Just, you know, being consistent with, um, you know, assignments and, um, you know, knowing exactly what you're doing in, in the pass game and a run game across the board. And, um, you know, all indications are he's going to be able to do that. Brian, even a second-year group of receivers that didn't play a whole lot last mm -hmm. year. It sounds like they're going to have opportunity in, in the spring with uh, Emeka and, and Julian now. Just what, what are you looking from that group that's going to tell you that they're making the right strides? Yeah, I mean, the truth is they're going to get really pushed by this freshman group. Um, you know, the three guys that came in have made it already an impact. Uh, we've been very impressed with them and then Brandon coming in the summer. So, um, you know, this is going to be a really good opportunity with, with Emeka out, Julian out. You know, we're going to be smart with X and with Marvin. Um, those guys have played a lot of football. So, like you said, what an unbelievable opportunity for all those guys to step in and play. And so this is a very, very big spring for them. Uh, right next door, Doug Lane Reed, Cleveland.com. Fine. It's day one, but Jelani Thurman, just looking at him out there, the, the size and yeah. the way he moves, uh, you don't want to put too much on a young no. guy. But just when you see it and what you know in recruiting, what what are the possibilities there? Yeah, I, I'm um, – 
you know, again, it's hard to tell early on, but he has all the tools. Uh, tight end is a developmental position. There's a lot that goes on with tight end. I mean, you're talking about you got protection, you got blocking, you got route running. I mean, there's a lot going on in day one for a tight end. Um, but all the tools are there. Um, his mentality and competitiveness we've seen in the last eight weeks. So, um, you know, this is a guy who just needs a ton of reps. And the more reps he gets, the better he's going to be. But all the tools are there. Fourth row middle, Pat Murphy, 24-7 sports. Ryan, just looking at the stat sheet and the roster, you see Davison's measurements, and that stands out for a cornerback. When you see him out there, he really stands out. What does being a corner of his size give you maybe both advantages and disadvantages? Physicality you see for sure. You, you can see even today I, I saw a couple off to watch the film where he got his hands on guys and, um, you know, that length, like you said, once you get your hands on, when you have that type of length, um, you know, it, it makes you know it hard for the, for the receiver. Uh, also being a zone corner and having that type of length and size allows you to cover more ground and get your hands on more balls. So, um, you know, and, and for him, he's got experience to play in the SEC as a freshman. So uh, I think that helps with his confidence. Going back to the quarterbacks, what are you looking for specifically with them that would give you confidence that they could run this offense? I think the first thing is leadership. You have to be felt and heard, um, and and I did that today. You know that was that was a really uh, encouraging thing. I just I heard even maybe after a good play or a bad play, it didn't matter. Um, you know, good leadership out there because at the end of the day, it's our job to to you know as quarterbacks to to lead the team and to drive teams down or drive the, drive the team down the field and score touchdowns. Um, and being that leader is critically important. Um, I feel like we're going to have a, a great supporting cast. So, you know, the quarterback doesn't need to be superhuman. He just needs to do his job, make routine plays routinely, and then it'll build from there. Um, but the number one thing we're looking for is leadership and toughness. Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Uh, Travion had foot surgery, obviously, in I think December, and he was not expected to do anything. He was out there at least – he didn't do the individual drills, but he was out there at least running the start of warm where Where's – where does he stand right now, and what do you see from him? So well, we've had to keep him out of things. Um, there's been a time where he, he jumped in um, mat drills with a boot on. You know, he's dying to get out there. He's very competitive. So, yeah, Mick had to grab him and take him out a couple times, I think. Um, but he's he's uh, itching to get out there, and uh, he's not ready to go right now. Um, and we'll continue to evaluate as we go. But um, but I think his rehab's gone well, and his attitude's been unbelievable. Um, I think the guys uh, appreciate his positiveness because, you know, when you get injured and you get down, you know, it's – it can, it can wear on you a little bit, but you haven't seen that with him. He's been a positive influence to his teammates and to his unit. So, um, you know, he's had a really good off season, you know, especially with his rehab. So, we're anxious to get him back on the field soon. I just don't know if it'll be this spring yet. Uh, second row left, Stephen Meese, Cleveland.com. done this in the past where guys are early enrolled. They're still heavily involved in what's going on. Is with Lincoln not being here? Is he one yeah. of those guys? Is Brandon or some of these guys involved? Even if they're not here right now. Yeah, Lincoln uh, is finishing up. I think he's making a run to state basketball championship. So we're just, you know, making sure he can focus on that. That's important to him. But at the same time, we're also getting him some of the offense. Uh, and then he'll, once the basketball's over, he'll come in and spend a few days with us watching practice. So I think that'll be good. Um, but with Brandon, you know, he's he's been getting with Coach Hart and kind of learning the offense. And so we have a plan. Calvin, same thing with, with Coach Walt. Um, we, we have a really good plan in place. You know, guys have to send us some videos of their workouts. We have Zooms and different things. We're learning the offense, defense, and special teams so that when they get here, they're not far behind. And if you think about between Donovan Jackson, JTT, Sonny, uh, we've had a few guys who have come in the summer and actually you know, made an impact in the fall. And I think it's because of that plan that we have for those guys who aren't here in the spring. Ideally, we like them here in the spring, but it doesn't work out for everybody. And so that's kind of how we get them ready um, You know, once they get here in the summer. I'm sorry, dot in the eyes, rivals. It doesn't matter, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, with Katie Curry, he looks significantly heavier than he did yeah. in January. What's the plan for him? I mean, he's obviously playing shield on punt. He's an expensive end. Is he standing up? What, where, where do you see him? Because it seems like he makes plays every time he's on the field. I thought he came in the last preseason in the first quarter of the season um, and, and really, like you said, made plays. Just a tremendous football player, but uh, quite honestly, kind of, kind of, you know, leveled off a little bit as the season went on. We talked about that. Coach Jay talked to him about that, and then he's really picked it up this off season. So, um, I think we'll probably have a better feel for that as we get through the spring on where we want to utilize him. But he's got to reestablish himself in that area because he does have the ability. He's a, got a high motor, 
um, makes plays, football player. And like you said, he's, he's done a good job with his body. And I think um, and now into year two, he's going to really uh, make a push here. Does that motor like, make him a fit at the jack position at all? Or is it still mostly Sawyer Melton in that sort of role? Yeah, I, I, we're looking at all that. You know, I think, like you said, um, he has some of those um, those tools. You know, and, and so we got to find out if that's the right fit for him and, and what we're asking that position to do. But he does um, have a lot of those uh, skills that we're looking for in the Jack. Anybody I missed? Miss anyone at all? Anybody have one last question, Doug? And then Tony, go ahead. Just a little more on right tackle. It looked like, again, yep. Zen was first up and Tegra behind him today. But just where are those two young guys at in their careers right now, and, and what do you look for? How does a young offensive lineman in a job battle try to stand out? Well, Zen was at left tackle, Tegra was at, at guard, right guard, and so now they've both you know, kind of taken on that right tackle position. And uh, we, we, we spent a lot of time figuring out that was the right move, but we felt like making Josh the left tackle and then, and then really having those guys compete at right tackle was the right play. It'll take a little adjustment for him, certainly for Tegra, making the move from inside to outside, and then Zen from left to right. But um, Tegra will be into year two. Tegra got a lot of two reps for us last year. We see a lot of potential in Tegra. Um, and, you know, I, I think every rep you get in Tegra is, is going to pay off in the long run. I think that's a really good investment. Um, I'm hoping that he can, you know, um, you know, make a push. You know, Zen, this is a big year for him. This is year three. And so, um, again, I don't think we'll get an idea until – you know, we put the pads on. But even then, we were talking about it as an offensive staff at, at this time last year and even to the middle towards the end of spring. You know, our, our, our guys had a hard time blocking our front, and I think they did a great job, you know, closing the gap throughout the summer. And, and shoot, Paris has now got a chance to be a top 10 pick. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done, but um, certainly those guys are going to have to step up, and, and this is a great opportunity for them to do it over the next 15 practices. As a quarterback, what was your thought the first time you saw Devin Brown at 33? And then how does that continue to uh, go through your mind? I thought of Larry Bird. I don't know why I thought of Larry Bird. Um, no, he came in, asked, and he said that was something that he's done for a while. His family was in something that um, was important to him. And I said, OK, you're going to stick out a little bit. You know, you all right with that? He said, yeah. And I said, as long as you guys are good with it, I'm good with it. So he's going to take a, take a run at 33. So This is a big job, one of the bigger jobs in the state. For a guy who has okay is okay with having that just standing out with that right. number, what does that say about a quarterback? Um, I, I don't know. I, I know that um, he's never shied away from from competition and never shied away from um, you know grabbing onto something. And this is something that he feels strong about, and he wants to, I guess, blaze his own path for that number, and that's good for him. Um, so you think about you know his recruiting and everything that kind of went on. You know, this is not a guy who shies away from things. So. Um, you know, I got no problem with it. Coach, thank you very yeah. much. Okay, guys. Yep. Thanks, guys. Coach Knowles will be in here in momentarily. It did. It went faster.
guys come from, man? <laughs> I haven't, seen you, in, I haven't right. seen you in a while. All right, Coach, thanks so much for being here. We'll open up the floor. Dave Biddle, 24-7 Sports. Hi, Jim. Um, when, when you look at Sonny Styles, is, is that a guy that you feel like we have to find a starting role for him? I was asking Coach Day about this as well. Is, it, is he not quite there yet? Or when you look at Sonny, Sonny, is he a guy where it's like we've got to find a starting role for him? Yeah, I think when you look at the um, potential best 11 players, you know, for the 2023 defense, I mean, he's a guy that our staff is going to point at and say, we need to find a way to get him in there. Um, you know, he held his own in the in the semifinal. And uh, I think he's just got all kinds of skills. So, yeah, we got to experiment with him in different places, um, see, see what's best for Sonny and our defense. But he's definitely on our mind, and, and uh, he will be all spring in terms of getting him into a position that's effective, you know, for the defense. Uh, second row right, Bill Landis, Rival. Jim, um, I, don't, I don't believe C.J. Hicks played a snap at linebacker last year. Um, is, I guess when you look back on that one, are you okay with how that played out? And then two now, how does he slot into things in 2023? I guess similar to, to the Sunny question, like I see a guy you feel like you got to find a role for this year. You know, um, CJ, great athlete, uh, really good kid, good energy, um, good team guy. And I think that is worth saying, right? Because when you're five star and, and Mr. Everything, I think it's, a, it, you know, it's challenging to come into a top five program and not play right away. But he handled it really well. Um, you know, CJ's situation is – is different because, you know, there's a couple guys coming back. There's a lot of uh, uh, experience there. Um, he's He plays in a position that's closer to the ball, you know what I mean? So I feel like there um, there's some learning, you know, in terms of all the schemes and all the different fits that you get as a linebacker. Um, if you're up front, you know, you're attacking – you know, there's you can get in pretty early in your career, and if you're on that back end, you have space and distance and all that to figure it out. So, I'm really just looking for improvement from CJ. You know, not uh, putting any pressure on him. I'm really just looking for him to improve this spring. Um, I know he's going to have a great career, but I haven't put any kind of timeline on him yet. Explaining the jack position in the past is something that can be maybe a little more simplified. Uh, still near the ball, but more more simplified sort of existence. Could he potentially do some of that stuff in an effort to give him more? Yeah, I've thought about that. I have thought about that uh, for CJ because um, when directed, he's like skilled and um, he can get from point A to point B quickly. Um, um, I don't know how much we'll be delving into the jack this spring, but I think it is something good to look at CJ for the for the fall but um, you know we did not quite use the position as much as I had hoped last year it just didn't seem to develop with our personnel and um, so this spring I want to focus on the fundamentals you know of our four down and, and really getting better at the fundamentals but I see CJ as a candidate and, and Mitch Melton. And one of the reasons I'm not going to get into it this spring as much is because Mitch, who I thought had a real chance, like he's still coming off that injury and he won't be ready for camp. Go ahead. Sorry about that, Coach. Fourth row right, Cameron Keith Robinson, The Athletic. Coach, actually, just kind of off that on Mitch Melton, I mean, Dave, Brian Day said he's just doing individual drills about this spring. What do you want to see from him as he comes back from, from the injuries this spring? Yeah, I want to see him back to where he was, right? So we moved him from uh, linebacker to uh, the front when I got here and then um, started experimenting with him in the jack position. And he jumped out. He jumped out. He really did to Coach Johnson, you know, and and, and to me uh, and things that he did. So I just want to see him back there. I want to, I want to see, okay, has he recovered completely? Is he healthy? Uh, second row right, Doug Lay Maurice, Cleveland.com. What does that mean for Jack Sawyer then? Jack, Jack will be just, you know, he'll be an end with JT. You know what I mean? And he'll he'll work on all those fundamentals of of being an end. Um, you know, I think that's important for Jack. Uh, you know, 
I, I feel like um, he didn't have the improvement or the big jump that he could have last year um, because he got involved in the Jack stuff and maybe he wasn't as focused as he could have been to make those improvements at DN. So I want to make sure I keep him at uh, DN opposite JT. Jim, I want to ask you about the quarterbacks. Quarterbacks, um, Devin Brown, Kyle McCord, obviously there's still not much to know about them, but you've seen plenty of them. What, I guess, um, maybe annoys you about them as a defensive coordinator? What, you know, what do they do that gives defenses problems, each of them? Um, you know, Devin can run around. You know, uh, Kyle manages the game really well. Um, you know, they both have their strengths and, and, and in terms of reading defenses, um, I know this is going to be a big spring for them, but, you know, I don't have that much to say about them, except I think they're both very talented and uh, look forward to see, uh, you know, how it goes this spring. And your pick to start? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> You guys brought in Davison from, from Ole Miss, obviously got some experience in the SEC. What did you like about him? And, and specifically physically, he stands out. Um, what can a, a corner like that bring that maybe you guys didn't have in that room? Yeah, Davison looked good out there today, um, picking things up, but really just breaking on the ball. I mean, I liked his, his length. You know, he has um, real length and got his hands on a lot of balls. And he was um, – he was quick to mix it up too. You know, I joke with him all the time. He's got that, you know, Jersey, Jersey toughness, you know, and, and, um, he's got experience in the SEC, you know, played a lot of football. Um, I just think he's going to bring, uh, a lot of competition to the position. Front row right, Austin Ward, rivals. Jim has come out a couple times that Denzel has like, took this off season pretty seriously. I don't know how much. You've noticed of that. We know last year didn't go the way he wanted, uh, certainly physically. Uh, what have you noticed from Denzel, either workouts or, or just day one today? Great. It's a it's a it's a great observation. I think uh, Denzel this uh, off season just stood out, man. I mean, it's just this physical development, the way he competed. Um, we were talking about the the uh, yesterday as a defensive staff. I have the defensive staff go through a uh, a draft, you know. I'm not giving out any of the results, but I have them go through a draft, you know, and we kind of draft our team to kind of see, you know, what our thoughts are on each player. And you can see where maybe somebody, you know, drafted him high and somebody drafted him low. But Denzel came out great in that, and I think everybody has seen the off season. And then today, you know, he got his hands on more balls than than maybe all last spring and camp together. So he just he just seems to be on point. Right next door, Tim May, Letterman Row. Yeah, a uh, bunch of questions, but I'll just get one. What, what is it like, though, to see Jihad Carter and Davison Igbenosan come in, you know, in this in this new modern era to give you an infusion? What what does that mean for the defense, I guess? And just what do you what do you think about those kind of things? You know, I. I it is a different age. Um, times are changing. I mean, I like I like the fact that we're you know the Ohio State. We don't participate in that arena uh, very much. We're not turning over you know what twenty two new guys or some something that's going. You know, we can really be picky about the guys. And um, you know, you're talking about two starters at uh, Power Five programs that now come in with experience. And uh, I think they give us great competition there. That's what we need in the back end. We need competition. We need guys fighting to play. We need guys competing against our offense, getting hands on balls. You know, the next step and evolution of this defense really um, starts in the back end. You know, we all know uh, last year and how things went and, and um, you know, Everywhere I've been, it's kind of taken me time to, to get the back end up to, 
you know, having that confidence to compete. And you bring in two guys like that, and it just pushes the, uh, the other guys see it, and they walk right in, and they're mature. And they're not messing around. You know, they're not a young guy coming in who's kind of feeling these guys aren't messing around, and it pushes everyone. And is it important for those guys to, for one of another term, stir the drink as opposed to rock the boat? You understand what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, I do. do you, you sense you, that? Yeah, you want you want guys who still want to be part of the team, and they're both like that. Yeah, you when um, when we interview them, that's exactly what we're interviewing for: maturity, for fit. Um, to you know, can they be a great teammate? And, and uh, those guys have that. Right next door, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Jim, you mentioned you didn't use the jack position as much maybe <laughs> you thought you would last year. Can you give some context to how much did you use it? Was it not as much? What did you kind of go in hoping for? And ultimately kind of how did you feel about that? And yeah, I thought, I mean, I, yeah, going in, I mean, I thought uh, over the course of the season we could, you know, get it up to a – you know, a third of the defense or 60-40. You know, by the time I left Oklahoma State, it, it was almost uh, exclusive. And I knew we wouldn't have that here. We're built more as a four down, and our, our front's pretty darn good. You know what I mean? So you don't want to mess with that too much. But I thought it could, it could get up to be a third. And it just didn't – you know, we weren't as productive out of it. You have to go with what, what works, you know. So I don't know what – maybe it was – 15 percent maybe it was half of what i had hoped it to be still part of my long term absolutely because i i think we could get the best combo player in the country you know when we target one you know as you're moving down the road you're you you know we're ohio state we you know that's a position that people don't have you know we can we can target the best one and build towards that and work towards it Third row left, Dan Hope, the Lemon Warriors. Jim, last year, Tommy and Steele basically played all the reps of linebacker. Do you envision it staying that way this year, or do you envision trying to rotate guys a little more? Yeah, I definitely want to rotate them more. I think Cody Simon, you know, with uh, Tommy out this spring, Cody's going to have a big spring, and he's going to put himself in position to, to play regularly. That's my vision, you know, so that we can have um, – a really nice rotation there, which, you know, when you're playing uh, 14, 15 games, you know, is going to help us at the end of the year. You know, it really is. We need to get Cody um, to that point where he can play, you know, and rotate with those two guys. And then, you know, when you look at uh, CJ and Gabe, the young guys, you, you know, you're really looking at that leap from year one to year two. You know, can they show in the spring – like you said, that they're ready to play. You want those guys to force you to put them on the field by how well they play. Um, but, yeah, I'm definitely hopeful we can take some of the reps off of Tommy and Steele because it will help us in the end of the season. Where does Reed Carrico fit in there? You know, Reed's bouncing around a little bit right now. We're trying him out some different positions. You know, we have, uh, uh, you know, our Sam position against 12 personnel. Um, you know he's kind of he's kind of he's kind of jumping around a little bit. Um, we definitely want him to make a push on special teams, and and you know we hope he shows up. And you're looking for him also, like Gabe and CJ, to to show that they have to be on the field, show that maturity. Uh, right in front of him, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Targeting guys for that jack position, that combo type player. Um, is there? A what position is that kid playing in high school right now? Where you're trying to target? Is he more of a defensive end like Joshua Mickens was? Is he, you know, a linebacker? Is there like a style you're looking for when you're actually trying to recruit that position now? No, I mean I think it could, you know, he could be a he could be a tailback. You know, I mean like the the first one I ever had, um, who went on to be, you know, the first first round draft pick in the history of Western Michigan was Jason Babin, and um, you know, he was a tailback in high school. So. I think what what you're looking for is someone who's just an extremely productive football player but doesn't fit into uh, anyone's mold, you know. That guy who's just, you know, well, the D-line coach says he's not big enough, you know. The linebacker coach says he doesn't read well enough, you know. Or the running back coach said, well, he's, he's, he's a really good player, but he's not, you know, one of the top three running backs in the country. And uh, I feel like eventually we'll have something to sell in that area. Front row, Bill Rubinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. 
Yeah, well, last time we talked to you was, I think, early February, and you had just started the dissection process, I guess, of kind of what, what faltered late in the year. Mm -hmm. Now that you've had that time to do it, kind of give your synopsis of, of what happened in those last two games. You know, um, boy, you had to bring that up, didn't you? And what you I was feeling so. I was feeling so good and positive, right? <laughs> um, so you try to look at the things that worked, right? We try to, you know, we do percentages and course of the season and and the things that worked, and then you say, okay, how how did those things fail? Or I look at myself and my calls and and you know how I can. Um, kind of ch change a little bit early on, you know, so that the matchup games, those areas where we let down in one-on-one -on -one matchups that were costly, uh, I need to find ways to uh, protect our guys better. But I can't do that like just that week. I think I had to, I have to have more of an uh, a bigger view, you know. So some of the things that I'm going to put in. Um, camp, spring, are are geared now more to those ma more to those matchup games. You know, to avoid those situations where you know one error is costly to our to our defense. You know, and then I have to preach the competition against our offense because we got a great offense. You know, I feel like I was uh, last year more into the teaching aspect of it to make sure that we got it, understood it. And, um, but I, now we understand it. I need to ramp up the uh, accountability for competing in practice one-on-one -on -one in all those spots because that's a, every practice for us, for us is like a matchup game, right? These big matchup games. We need to perform better in practice against our offense. You know, and treat that as our practice for when we get to the matchup games. Great. Coach, thank you very much. We're going to wrap it up from there. Sorry, Coach. Thanks, guys. we got to get to those quarterbacks, Jim. Yeah. 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 yeah, everybody bring your stuff up.